Thank you. Thank you. So I've been blessed with the opportunity to play many sports throughout my life, whether it be baseball, basketball, football, soccer, you name it, I've probably played it. And with all this exposure, I've experienced many different coaches in my life. Of course, starting with my dad back in T-ball, telling me to stop kicking up the dirt or picking daisies out in right field. But as I've grown up and I've experienced more coaches from different places, I've noticed something that a lot of them share in common. And what that is is that a majority of them have the ability to offer guidance to me that I not only can use on the field, but I can incorporate into my everyday life. And that was really interesting to me because how is it possible that somebody that we only view as there to drop X's and O's and win games can have a major impact on our life? Hello, my name is Jordan Herfeld, and I'll be talking about how coaches are more than X's and O's. So to get a better understanding of this topic, I decided to look up the real definition of a coach. Like I said previously, a lot of us just view them as there to make sure we win games and have everybody in the stands have a good time. But the, the real definition of a coach is somebody who is responsible for managing or training a person or a team. And a word that stuck out to me there was the word managing. And I immediately related that to my life and my parents and a lot of our parents too. They manage us. They tell us, eat your vegetables, do your homework, go to school, all these things. And parents to us as well are mentors to us. We look up to them. They make us better people. So if a coach is responsible for managing and so do our parents and our parents are mentors, then a coach can be a mentor to us as well. And with all my exposure to sports and coaches, I've had some good experiences, but I've also had some bad ones. This is a picture of me around 11 years old out at a pitching lesson. And a couple weeks prior to that, I was out in a tournament in Manteca. And we had just lost. And we were all frustrated. And we were sitting. Our coach was talking to us after the game. And he looked us all in the eyes. And he told us none of us would have a career in baseball. And that was really hard for me to hear, especially at 11 years old, who all, what all I've known is that I want to play professional baseball. To have a guy that I used to look up to tell me I have no chance of doing that, it really made me question, like, am I making the right decision by playing baseball? Am I making right decisions in anything I choose? It was really tough for me. However, I've also had good experiences with our very own Coach Cronin here. Going into junior year, I was really hesitant on playing football. I thought, you know, let's just focus on baseball, try to play in college if possible, and not worry about football, you know, an injury or something like that. So I went into his office and I talked to him and he sat me down and he said, whatever you decide, you decide, but make sure it's nothing that you regret. You don't want to look back on high school and say, dang, I regret pl not playing football. He said, everything you do in life, make sure it's something you want to do and you don't live with regrets. And that's something that'll stick with me for my entire life and anything that I do. Those simple words made such an impact on me and obviously I stuck around. I played football last year, I played this year, and I definitely do not regret playing football. Uh, one of the greatest coaches of all time, John Wooden, he coached at UCLA, won many national championships, thousand wins, Hall of Famer, one of the most successful coaches of all time, wrote this book called They Call Me Coach. And in this, he talks about what made him so successful. And what's unique about that is that it had nothing to do with the wins and losses. It had everything to do with how his players turned out off the court. He had players like Bill Walton and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, some of the greatest players we've known, still talk today about how Coach Wooden made such an impact on their life and made them the man they are today. He has this quote, make every day your masterpiece. It was very similar to what Coach Cronin told me, is live your life with, with no regrets, do what you want to do, make your life memorable, make it a masterpiece. It's really interesting to hear a coach who, doesn't, who was so successful doesn't really care about any of that as long as his players are successful. I found an article but written by North Central University, and they talked about what makes a great coach. And the two things they focused on were developing relationships with your players and developing growth. Most importantly, the relationship part. If a coach has a good relationship with his players, then he can get the best from the player and teach them the most, and that player will learn the most. I also found a statistic done where a group of 200 coaches were surveyed asking what they believe their primary job as a coach was. They were given a list and they selected, and 76% of those coaches selected that their main job was to be a mentor, and only less than 20% selected wins and losses. 
So even coaches nowadays don't, could care less about those wins and losses as long as their players have a good time and they remember their experiences and become better human beings. This is a picture of Vince Lombardi, one of the greatest football coaches of all time. His, the Super Bowl trophy is named after him, and this is after they won the Super Bowl against the Raiders. And the man lifting him up, that is Jerry Kramer, a future Hall of Famer. And this is really a really interesting picture because you can just see the relationship that they had and how it goes beyond football. No player is going to lift up a coach if he doesn't like that coach. Okay, So their relationship is beyond football. And Jerry Kramer, in his Hall of Fame speech, talked about the day that he felt accepted by Coach Lombardi. And after that day, he felt like he had succeeded in life and how his life was complete and everything was worth it. And he was so happy about that. Another picture here is Carrie Stroop. She won gold, the gold medal in the Olympics for vault, but what's unique is that she broke her ankle on her previous attempt before winning gold. That's pretty, pretty, pretty cool, I mean, to do this on a broken ankle. And you can also just see how excited their co her coach is for her doing that and powering through to make sure that she won the gold and just knowing how much hard work she put in and to seeing the success she had. In conclusion, I have this quote. It was spoken by Morgan Wooten. He was one of the most successful, winningest high school coaches of all time back in the East Coast. And he said, to be successful in coaching, you have to treat your team like a family. The leader needs backing from everyone. This goes back to the whole relationship thing. Coaches are there to develop relationships with us. They're meant to be mentors. They're meant to leave a legacy in our life. It's up to us to make sure that we accept them. Thank you.